Hey everybody, welcome to Board Game Heaven. My name is Raymond, and in this video I'm going to talk about a game called Mace How by Lee Broderick, published by Dragon Dawn Productions. And this is a card game for one or two players, in which players are Viking Jarls caught in a burial tomb in the Orkney Islands in the 12th century, trying to dig their way out without starving or going mad. And this was successfully kickstarted. You can still late pledge. I'll put a link in the description below so you can follow that and get a copy yourself. Now, first I'll uh, set up a game and I'll explain the rules and then I'll give you my final thoughts. To set up a game of Mace How, simply take the board, and this is a prototype, the final version will be of a thicker cardboard and it will also look differently. It will have the numbers one through four on the uh, food and the health track and it will also be double-sided so the other side of the board will have an extra health track for when you're playing with two players. But you set that at the middle of the table and you take the food token and you set it at the first spot here and the health token at the fourth spot over there. Uh, this is a second token I have in a prototype that you can use to put over it to indicate your maximum health because that may decrease over time. And in a two player game, you use the other side of the board, like I said, and you'll have blue heart tokens for the second player. Decide if you want to play an easy, medium or hard game and take either three, four or five of these collapsed wall tokens and put them on the spots indicated on the board. So four tokens are for a medium game. Then you take the 36 cards from the standard deck and possibly also add one or perhaps even more of the mini expansions that come with the game. I have three in this prototype. There will be six because the Kickstarter unlocked all of the stretch goals. So you will have six mini expansions and you can pick one or maybe more and shuffle those into the deck as well. And then you're ready to play. Let's explain the rules. So in Mace How, you're going to be playing cards from your hand. You've got five cards on your hand and every round you're playing one card to your row in front of you and you discard another card and then you draw back up to five. And all these cards have different effects and they are listed on the card with icons. And one of these arrows uh, will say, you know, we play to the row and X will mean that you discard the card and both of these may have an effect. And all of these cards that are in the core deck, that's eight different ones, and there's a different number of each of them, they come in two colors. So you've got the red runes and the blue runes. And if at any point uh, you draw back up your hand to five and you've only got one single color on your hand, you go mad. I'll explain that in a bit, but you want to avoid that. So that's why there's two different kind of cards. There's some hand management in there. But before I go into the rules, let me explain what all of these cards do. So these are the excavation cards and you want to be able to play four of these in a row to be able to but dig through one of the collapsed walls in order to escape. So if you play this to your row, that's the first icon there, it tells you, you know, if there's four cards of either color, you can remove one blockade. But if they are four of the same color, you can actually remove an extra one. So that's two blockades. And if you discard one of these cards, nothing happens. This is the goose. If you play that one, you can add one food to your food track and if you discard it, nothing happens. Uh, this is, uh, you're basically pulling the last bits of meat off of the bones of the, the geese, probably. So you ran out of food. So if you played that to your row, you lose all of your remaining food. And if you discard it, you lose a health. This is the eating card. If you play this, you eat any number of geese that you have, a minimum of one and then you gain as much health on your health track and of course up to your maximum health. And again, if you discard it, nothing happens. If you go to sleep, you gain one health and if you discard it, nothing happens. This is Odin's Raven, it's a good omen. So if you see that, it brings you hope, you get two health. And if you discard it, nothing happens. And now some of the bad cards here. So this is treasure, if you're playing this to your row, you're actually actively digging for a treasure, which will cost you two health while, you know, you should be focusing and getting out of there. And if you discard it, 
uh, basically just one of you is digging for it so you lose one health because remember there's two Jarls trapped in there in this story and this is a collapsed passage which is of course bad news because if you are forced to play it to the row then you lose two health and two more uh, walls collapse so you add two more of those uh, collapsed wall tokens to the track on the board which you then have to excavate again but if you discard it you lose one health and these are three of the mini expansions that will be in the game there is going to be three more uh, which aren't in this prototype so i don't know what those cards will be yet but you'll see, and uh, well, these you can add to the core game. So you can pick one of these and they all start with the same letters. So there's conservation and crumble, there's hope and horror, and there's garner and gluttony. So these cards add mostly positive effects and these add bad effects. So if you've got conservation and you're playing it to your row, then you can return one card from the row to your hand. And if you discard it, you return a card from any discard pile to your hand. So if you're playing one player, there's only one discard pile. But in a two player game, you could pick which discard pile to use. But then there's Crumble, which is the bad news. If you play that to the row, you discard the top five cards of the draw deck. And if you discard it, you discard all the cards in your hand, but do not trigger any effects on those cards. And there's the Hope and Horror expansion. If you have the Hope card and you play it to the row, it acts as an excavation card of any color. So you again check if you have four of those excavation cards. And if you do, you can discard one of those collapsed passages. And if they're all the same color, you can discard two. And this, as it counts as either color, you know, it doesn't matter which uh, others you have. So this can count as either red or blue. And if you discard it, you can look at the top two cards of the draw deck. And for each card, you can select if you want to discard it or put it back on top of the deck. And since it doesn't have a rune icon, you can also not go mad when it's on your hand. The horror card, on the other hand, when played to your row, you go mad. I'll explain what that does in a bit. And if you discard it, you lose one health and one food. And then there's Garner and Gluttony. If you Garner and you play it to the row, you spend any amount of food and return twice that number of discarded cards from the discard pile to the deck and then you shuffle the deck. But if you discard this card, you gain one food. And if you've got the uh, Gluttony card and you play it to your row, you lose two health, so that's not good. And if you discard it, you lose all of your food. So... The rules of the game are pretty straightforward. You always have five cards in your hand and you always play one card and discard one card and then draw back up to five and you do what those cards say. If by playing a card it forces you to discard a card from your hand then you don't activate those effects only if you choose to discard a card. And the goal is of course to remove all of the collapsed wall tokens from the board and then you escape from the tomb so in order to do that you need to play at least well you need to play four of those excavation cards to uh, either remove one or two if they are of the same color now you can also go mad if at any time you draw back up to five and you notice that all of the cards in your hand have the same color rune, so either red or blue, you go mad. And that means you immediately discard your entire hand to the discard pile. Then you take the discard pile and shuffle it back into the draw deck entirely. You draw five new cards and then you continue, but with one less health. So you have to slide your maximum health one step backward and if you were at max health that will go down as well so that is something to keep in mind you can never go over your maximum health should you draw five new cards of the same color after going mad you can ignore the effect again you don't go mad twice in a row now it can happen that at some point you run out of cards and you can't draw back up to five but you can still continue playing until you are unable to either play and discard a card you must always be able to play and discard a card if you can't you immediately lose the game or if you lose your last health then you also die and lose the game 
Now in a two-player cooperative game, you shuffle the deck and set up the board just as normal. Only with four collapsed tokens, it's easy. With five, it's medium. And with six, it's hard. And you place both of the health tokens at the third slot instead of the fourth. Each player will have their own health track and food is shared among the players. And one of the players will have a special Jarl token. The player with the Jarl token is the starting player and starts the game. Then you all take turns just like normal and you either each play and discard a card on your turn. And the player in possession of the Jarl token may choose to pass the Jarl token to the other player on their turn instead of playing and discarding cards. So you could do that if you have a really bad hand and you want the other player to take another turn. But you can also only do that once because then you pass the Jarl token and then the other player can do that. But if they pass it back, then of course nothing changes. And if either player is unable to play and discard a card during their turn or loses their last health, then both players lose. There are a couple of uh, setup variants. Uh, players can choose to use one or all of the following setup rules to alter their game, depending on which expansion set you use. With the uh, Conservation Crumble mini expansion, you can, uh, before drawing your hand, put the top five cards of your draw deck into the discard pile. With the Gluttony and Garner expansion, you start the game with three health and three food if playing solo, and two health each and three food in a two-player co-op game. And in the Conservation Crumble expansion, you can start with one more passage token than usual with a maximum of seven. And there might be more rules for the uh, three new expansions that will be added to the game as well. Uh, these rules are not final yet. And then finally, there is a two-player co-op variant called Fear of the Dark. And in that variant, players are not allowed to talk or communicate about the game state or the cards in their hand. And during their turn, players may choose to not discard a card, but instead pass one of their hand cards to the other player. And then that player must immediately discard a card from their hand to bring the amount of cards in their hand down to five. The player receiving the card may discard the card that they just received, and the Jarl token is not used in that variant. And that's basically all there is to it, so let's just try a quick game to see if we can uh, win and to give you an idea of how it plays. So I've put four of these tokens on the board for a normal game. I've shuffled the deck, so I'm just gonna draw five cards into my hand. So let's have a look at what we have here. We've got the uh, eating card, we got sleeping, we got the raven, the Odin's blessing, that's good. But we also have the uh, treasure card, which is bad and a collapse card, which is also bad. So we kind of want to get rid of those. And you can either play to your row first and then discard or vice versa. So I could uh, technically play a bad card first and then play a good card to uh, gain some health again. So in this case, I'm just gonna uh, discard the treasure card, which is gonna cost me one health. And then I'm going to play the um, sleeping card, just Put that in my row, I'm gonna create a row here, and that will gain me one health back. So then I draw two more cards to get back to five. Still no excavation cards, but I got some food, and I also got the eat cards, so if I need it, you know, I can play these two in a row and get some health, but I also have Odin's Raven, which is pretty powerful. So again, I'm gonna discard a bad card here, so I only lose one health. And that's that, and then I still need to play a card. Let's see, um, I'm gonna play, I think uh, in this case, I might play the eating card, because that will gain me one health if, if I eat that one food that I have. Uh, and then later I could, you know, get a new uh, goose. And because this one, if I play that, I lose all my food. So I could play this if I have no food. I think <laughs> that's the only one I'm unsure about, but uh, if I can, then th this will have no effect. So I might try and do that. It might be, I don't know, I'm not 100% sure. Uh, it might be in the newer rules. I still have the uh, prototype rules, of course. It didn't really say. So I'm gonna just guess <laughs> if that's the case. I'm gonna play this card. 
and I'm gonna just eat up my last food and gain health back. So then I'm down to three again. I draw two more cards. And I got some excavation cards, but they are of different colors. And I kind of want to try and get the same color so I can excavate twice uh, for a, a row of four of these cards in one go. So let's see. Uh, and and you, they have to be in order as well. If I play this and then another card, I've wasted the excavation card. So let's see. Uh, I'll. Well, I can actually um perhaps just discard this and lose a health and then get some food because i still have the raven card uh because i need to discard something and i'd rather hold on to these um yeah so you know i'm just gonna discard this and then this won't matter if i uh, if i don't have the rules correctly no matter i won't be cheating so i lose a health and then I will play, I could play an excavation card, but right now I only have one of each, so I don't know which color to play, uh, you know, to increase my chances of having four of the same color. So I'll play this to the row and gain one food back. Okay, let's draw two more cards. I still have a blue one, so even if I draw two red ones, I don't go mad. This is good. There's another collapse. Oh boy. So I'll play the collapse card to the discard pile, losing another health, and I'll play the raven to the row and that will gain me two health back so yeah because this is a you know really good card and i want to be able to use it i don't want to waste it so you know if you can play it play it all right draw back up and now i've got another blue excavation so i might want to try and go for that because there's five of these red excavation cards and ten of the blue ones in the deck at least in the prototype so their odds of me getting more of these blue ones right now is higher. So let's see, what do we do? I think I'll play the, um, this, this uh, collapse card uh, into the discard pile and lose a health. And I'll play the goose and get another food. Because I want to see if I can get more. There's another one. And another one. Oh, I'm very lucky. I've got four of these. So now I'm going to play these, but I also have to discard one. So actually, that wasn't too good. But all right, I'll play a blue one because I know I can play four if I hold on to this. But it means that I have to discard this one, which is bad news because that might mean I could go mad if I draw two blue ones and then you know, I'd lose all of those cards. So, ooh, this is uh, it's tricky. I'm, I'm, I don't know what to do. If I play this, I can still excavate one. Uh, I could discard this, and just to be sure, but, oh, man, that's my fourth card. You know, I, it's a hard decision. Difficult decisions to make in this game. So I'll discard that one. Oh boy, blue and blue. So that was a good decision because I would have gone mad. These are all blue, but I get a new one. So that's great. So now it's a bit sad. I have to play this one, which is good. But now I still want to hold on to this. I'm going to discard this. Nothing happens when I discard it, but that's the powerful, you know, Raven card. So I draw two new ones. Oh, more excavation cards, man. So this is the third one I play, and yeah, well, I'm gonna have to discard one of these. And yeah, draw back up. One, two, oh, there we go. So now I can play my fourth excavation card, that's great. I'll just move this up so I don't get confused how many I've used already. And since they were all blue, I can remove two of these collapsed walls. Great, we're halfway out. So now I still have to discard one card. I'll probably discard this one and lose a health. All right, still have blue and red, so we'll save for, uh, from uh, going mad. Now, I'd like some health. I don't, oh, I do have food, so I could play, you know, I could play this one, sleep and get one health, but this is better. If I play this one now, I can get rid of two of both of my food, eat it and gain two health. And then I'll just discard this sleep card. I won't sleep and nothing happens. So drawing two more cards, another sleep card, another excavation. This one a red, but I already discarded one red excavation cards. So there's only, since there's five in the game, only two more in there. 
So again, I have to choose, am I gonna go for blue or for red? Difficult decision. Ah, this is still quite a deck, so I'm gonna try and play it safe and with blue and discard another sleep card. I'll draw back up to five. Okay, well, I'll have to play another blue one because I still want to uh, be able to have, you know, four blue ones. But if I fail, I can always, always play these and just do them one at a time. And then I need to discard one. So, you know, I'll, oh, I'll discard this one and just lose one health. Oh, no, 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 sorry. I'll discard this one because of the colors and still lose one health. Okay, a bit too fast there. Oh, look, it's another red one. I made the wrong decision. Although I could still... Oh, no, I still have to play them. Well, okay, I will guess we'll just have to excavate one at a time. So I'll discard, because we... Oh, we do have food, but this is played, so I don't want to interrupt the digging. I'll play this, lose a health, and then I guess I'll have to play this. So that will be only one excavation. And then I draw back up to five. All right. Again, excavate. So we excavate one. I've used these four different colors. So there we go. And then I need to discard something. Let's see. Um, well, I don't want to lose health. And I got two geese anyway. So I'll discard the blue one since there's uh, technically more blue cards in the deck, I guess. All right, nothing happens. Draw two more cards. Of course, different colors again. Now, I know I won't be able to make... Well, it doesn't matter. We only have one. If it was hard mode, I would have, you know, needed to have four of the same. But we've got three excavation cards. I only need one more to get out of here. So I, I'm, I'm just going to play them. This is the first one. And then I'll discard... Oh, or do I want to... Wait. Do I want to get some food first? And then discard this. Whew. No, I'm gonna play it differently. I'm gonna play this. And then, you know, I lose all my food, but since I don't have any, I'm not losing anything. Again, not 100% sure if that is uh, legal. Maybe I can play this card to the row if I don't have any food. I'm not sure. I'll have to ask the designer. And then I'll discard this one. Nothing happens. Let's see if I get some more. Excavation cards. Yes, only excavation cards. So that's great. So now I get to play this one. And I'll just discard this one. Nothing happens. And now I can only draw one card. Oh, this is actually bad. Because now I play this. I have to discard a card. I'll discard this. There's nothing to draw. But then, look. Oh no, there's three. And I have to discard this one. And I'm out of cards. So I actually lose. <laughs> I was so close. Ah, oh, that's, that's too bad. But this is how tight the game is. It's really tense. You really have to, you know, keep an eye on your health, keep an eye on your food. And the number of cards in the deck, you know, there's only 36 cards in the deck. So you have to keep that in mind. So sometimes actually going mad can help you. If you can go mad, then, you know, you lose one maximum health, but you shuffle all of these cards back into the drawing deck and you have another shot and excavating so uh yeah that might actually help you <laughs> so well that's in a nutshell how you play the game and like i said again this is a prototype you'll have six expansions uh, mini expansions in instead of the three that i showed you you'll have wooden tokens you'll have a thicker double-sided board and the rule book will come in four languages in English, French, German, and Italian. And there's additional languages that you can download. There's gonna be uh, Spanish and Mandarin and Dutch and Polish. And the back of the rule book will also have a nice uh, list of all the icons and what they mean. So that's that, let's go to my final thoughts. So my final thoughts on Mace How by Lee Broderick. Let's start with the presentation. So the components that you saw here are still a prototype. This is a prototype game, but the cards already have a very nice and decent thickness and they're, they're a bit glossy. And uh, you know, there's just a small board with some of these uh, collapse tokens 
and these uh, health and, and food tokens. So it's all very basic and simple, but it looks good. You don't need that much. It's really just a deck of cards and a few extra components. So. Hey everybody, it's Raymond from the future here. So like I said in the rules explanation, the game will actually come with upgraded tokens and an upgraded board, which will be double-sided and you'll have cards with linen finish and also uh, several languages printed in the box and other languages you can download. All right, let's continue with my review. That's good, I guess. The artwork is really cool. I really enjoy the artwork. It's really dark and grim and gloomy, uh, as it should be, because you're trapped inside this cairn and it's dark and you're trying to dig your way out. And these cards really convey that feeling. So the artwork is also getting a thumbs up from me. The theme is pretty cool. It's about two Viking Jarls who three years separate from each other got caught in the same tomb and tried to dig their way out without going mad or starving to death. And in this game, you're both uh, together, these two Jarls at the same time, whether you're playing alone or with someone else, that's the story here. And it's pretty cool. It's a nice bit of history from the Orkney Isles that you're playing in a quick little car game. The gameplay itself is very simple, it's really straightforward, the rules are short and to the point you basically always have to play a card and discard a card and do what those cards say and then draw back up to five. And all these cards have different effects and you really have to weigh your options. Am I going to play this card or discard it? Which other card am I going to discard? If I played this one, what's going to happen? Do I have five of the same colors on my hand or do I risk having five of the same color on my hand and go mad, which is bad? And uh, you know, there's, there's these options that you have to consider and it's pretty basic, pretty simple, but it's a really cool game to uh, play solo and cooperatively with two players. And I really enjoyed it. It's quick, it's fun, and you're likely to play a couple of games after each other if you failed the game or if you you know, manage to get out really quickly, you, you might want to try again. So the replayability is also pretty good. And lastly, the game is also language independent. The cards all have icons on them, which are all explained on the back of the rule book, which is a very handy reference. And so you only need the rules in your language and they can be downloaded online in several languages as well. So that is also a big plus. So in the end, I really enjoyed this game, certainly giving it a thumbs up. I like the fact that it is fun to play solo and co-op with another player. You can add to the difficulty by adding more of these uh, collapsed walls. You can add extra cards to the deck to make it more challenging as well, as well in single as in uh, two player mode. And that's just a lot of fun. So really enjoyed this big thumbs up. And that's it. So if you enjoyed this video, please also give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. And if you hit the bell icon, you'll also get notified whenever I upload a new video. Please also consider becoming a Patreon saint to my channel by clicking the link to my Patreon site in the description below or by clicking the icon at the end of this video. And there you can read how to support my channel to keep me going. And that is greatly appreciated. And you'll also get your name in the credits of all of my videos. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time on Board Game Heaven.